William Shatner is an actor known for his role as Captain James T. Kirk in the Star Trek series. His career spans over seven decades, and he has become a familiar face on television and film. We're curious to know, is there a particular moment from William Shatner's works that has had a lasting impact on you? Or perhaps you have a memory associated with him that you hold dear. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Stay tuned, as we have many funny, shocking, and sad facts about this star to share with you. Keep watching to discover more about William Shatner's journey. William Shatner was born on March 22, 1931 in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He grew up in a Jewish family with two sisters. His father, Joseph Shatner, was a clothing manufacturer, and his mother, Anne, was a homemaker. Shatner attended West Hill High School and later studied economics at McGill University, where he graduated with a bachelor's degree in commerce. During his time at university, Shatner became deeply involved in the performing arts and joined the Montreal Children's Theatre. His passion for acting led him to join the Canadian National Repertory Theatre in Ottawa, where he honed his craft. Shatner's early stage experiences, particularly his role as Henry V at the Stratford Festival, were pivotal in shaping his acting career. These experiences laid the foundation for his future success in television and film, eventually leading to his iconic role as Captain James T. Kirk in the Star Trek series. Before their journey on the Starship Enterprise, William Shatner, DeForest Kelly, and James Doohan shared the screen in another show. Their paths converged again in Star Trek, where Shatner's portrayal of Captain Kirk became a defining role. His performance in Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, led him to cast Lawrence Luckinbill as Sibok, influenced by Luckinbill's portrayal of Lyndon Johnson. Following the original Star Trek series, some writers continued the adventure through Star Trek The Animated Series, featuring the voices of Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, ensuring the legacy of their characters lived on in animation. William Shatner's role as Captain Harrison Byers in Judgment at Nuremberg stands out in his career. Following Maximilian Schell's passing, Shatner remains the sole surviving cast member. His portrayal of Kirk in Star Trek V, The Final Frontier is notable for the creative disagreements it sparked. The character Sibok, initially unrelated to Spock, was later linked as Spock's brother, a change Shatner disagreed with, fearing it felt contrived. In recognition of his work, Shatner received the Governor General's Lifetime Achievement Award in 2011 and was honored by McGill University with a Doctorate of Letters, acknowledging his contributions to the performing arts. William Shatner, known for his role as Captain Kirk in Star Trek, has openly discussed the pressure to stay young in Hollywood. He has faced this challenge by embracing his age and continuing to work on various projects. Despite the industry's focus on youth, Shatner has maintained a successful career by adapting to new roles and opportunities. His experience highlights the broader struggle many actors face with aging in an industry that often values youth over experience. Shatner's approach shows that perseverance and adaptability can lead to longevity in the entertainment field. William Shatner took on the role of Assistant District Attorney Earl Rhodes in The Defenders, a character that first emerged in 1957 on Studio One. His portrayal of Sergeant T.J. Hooker in the television series T.J. Hooker was notable for his on-screen relationships with much younger women, reflecting a pattern in his personal life where he married women significantly younger than himself. In Star Trek III The Search for Spock, Shatner delivered a memorable improvised moment as Captain Kirk, reacting to the news of his son's death with a physical stumble that has left fans wondering whether it was intentional or a genuine misstep. In the comedy film Loaded Weapon 1, William Shatner portrays General Curtis Mortars. He engages in a verbal duel with Mike McCracken, played by Denny's Leary, who quotes the Beatles to make his point. In Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, Shatner's character, Captain Kirk, calls Spock his brother, despite having a brother, George Samuel Kirk, who appeared dead in an earlier episode. Lastly, in Star Trek Generations, Shatner as Kirk delivers his final words, an impromptu oh my, symbolizing a step into the unknown, a fitting end for a character known for exploring new frontiers. William Shatner's dedication to his role as Kirk in Star Trek V, the final frontier was evident through his rigorous daily routine of aerobics and strength training. His commitment extended to waking up at 4 a.m. every day to fulfill his responsibilities as both actor and director. In his portrayal of Sergeant T.J. Hooker, the crossover of actors between T.J. Hooker and the Star Trek series highlighted the interconnectedness of his career with the franchise. Notable actors from Star Trek made appearances on T.J. Hooker, creating a bridge between the two universes. 
Shatner's vision for Star Trek V also included a desire to introduce a unicorn for Sibok's horse, aiming for a mythical touch. However, this idea was vetoed to maintain the science fiction essence of the series. Shatner's influence and connections within the industry have fostered a network of shared talent across his projects, reflecting his significant role in television history. In Star Trek V The Final Frontier, William Shatner, playing Captain Kirk, had a vision for the final showdown that was ambitious. He wanted to show a dramatic battle against a deceptive god-like figure with a reveal of Hell's Ten Layers inspired by Dante's Inferno. However, budget constraints from Paramount Studios led to the cancellation of this concept, including the rock monsters designed for it. For Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, the Rura Pen prison scenes were shot in Los Angeles Bronson Park. Despite the warm weather during filming, Shatner and co-star DeForest Kelly had to act as if they were enduring bitter cold. Shatner's direction of Star Trek V was marked by a positive work environment, even under the pressure of tight deadlines. George Takei, who played Sulu, praised Shatner's leadership and found the experience of working with him as a director to be unexpectedly enjoyable, despite their past differences. William Shatner holds a special place for The Devil in the Dark and The City on the Edge of Forever episodes of Star Trek, citing the latter's strong writing and his own immersive performance. His portrayal of Captain Kirk earned him a spot on a British postage stamp series in 2020, celebrating the Star Trek legacy alongside other actors from the franchise. Shatner's unique crossover into the Star Wars universe by wielding a lightsaber in Invasion Iowa led to an invitation from George Lucas to perform at his Lifetime Achievement Ceremony, where he sang my way. In Star Trek V The Final Frontier, William Shatner's character, Captain Kirk, was to be chased by rock monsters on Shot Kauri. These creatures, portrayed by actors in rubber suits with smoke effects, were ultimately removed due to their unconvincing appearance and time limits. Interestingly, this concept was later adopted in the film Galaxy Quest. Shatner also shared his knowledge of horseback riding with Leonard Nimoy during the production, despite Nimoy's extensive riding experience from previous acting roles. The budget for the first two seasons of Star Trek was tight, averaging around 100000 per episode. For the third season, the budget was reduced even further, leading to a decline in quality. Gene Roddenberry left the show, and Fred Fravager took over. Despite criticism, Shatner defended Fravager, acknowledging the challenges of producing the show with limited funds. On the set of Star Trek V The Final Frontier, William Shatner faced the challenge of filming campfire scenes with limited resources. The crew had to use close-up shots because they couldn't build the entire set, including the tops of trees. During this time, Will Wheaton, a young actor from Star Trek The Next Generation, experienced a tough moment when he met Shatner, his idol, who initially acted rudely. However, after a conversation with Gene Roddenberry, Shatner made amends by sending Wheaton a card, praising his acting skills, and inviting him to visit the set again. Additionally, it's known that Shatner is unable to perform the Vulcan Salute, a fact shared during an episode of The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. William Shatner's experience with Star Trek, the motion picture was a mix of surprise and resignation. After viewing the film, he thought the slow pace signaled the end of the Star Trek series. Despite his initial doubts, the franchise continued to thrive, proving his prediction wrong. His role as Captain Kirk required a unique solution to accommodate his fluctuating weight, leading to the creation of a green captain's uniform. Additionally, the character of Commander Decker was introduced as a contingency plan by Paramount Studios, who were preparing for the possibility that Shatner might not continue in his iconic role due to financial negotiations. This foresight allowed for a smooth transition in the storyline, ensuring the series' longevity. William Shatner's life has been as dynamic off-screen as it was on. He lived on Girard Street in Montreal, Quebec, a place far from the Starship Bridges he would later command. His love for horses is well known, leading him to purchase one from a man connected to Hollywood through family ties to Chelsea Field and Scott Bakula. On the set of Star Trek The Motion Picture, Shatner, who played Captain Kirk, joined forces with DeForest Kelly and Leonard Nimoy to push for a script that honored the relationships and characters they had brought to life on television. Despite their efforts, the script went largely unchanged, leaving them to navigate a story that felt unfamiliar, even in the vastness of space they had come to know as home. After completing the main shooting for Star Trek V The Final Frontier, William Shatner took on the task of overseeing the post-production. He presented an early version of the film to the studio, which was well received, though this initial success was short-lived once the final special effects were viewed. 
In another role, Shatner portrayed Sergeant T.J. Hooker in the television series T.J. Hooker, where, despite appearances, his co-star Richard Hurd was actually younger than him. Shatner's directorial efforts in Star Trek V also earned him a Razzie Award for Worst Actor, joining a small group of actors including Sylvester Stallone and Kevin Costner who have directed themselves to such an honor. William Shatner's journey with Star Trek began with a belief that he needed to stand out among his peers. Over time, he grew to value the collective effort of the cast. His role as Sergeant T.J. Hooker showcased his versatility, sharing a unique connection with Lee Bryant as both portrayed anxious flyers on screen. Shatner's portrayal of Captain James T. Kirk is legendary, yet it was not without behind-the-scenes tension with co-star Leonard Nimoy. Their rivalry stemmed from Nimoy's rising popularity, which Shatner found challenging as he viewed himself as the lead. Disputes escalated to the point of disrupting production, but with time and intervention, the two reconciled and forged a lasting friendship. Shatner's experiences reflect the complexities of working closely with others and the eventual understanding and respect that can emerge from such relationships. William Shatner's journey in the acting world is marked by a notable moment during the filming of Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country. At a dinner scene, Shatner, alongside actors Christopher Plummer and David Warner, both of whom had played Hamlet, recited lines from Shakespeare's play. This moment was a nod to Shatner's early days when he understudied for Plummer in King Lear. Shatner stepped in for Plummer at the Edinburgh Festival with only hours notice, delivering a performance that spurred a friendly rivalry between the two, pushing Plummer to deliver one of his best performances the following night. In another instance, Shatner's portrayal of Captain Kirk crossed paths with Al Pacino during the filming of Frankie and Johnny. In a planned surprise, Shatner and Leonard Nimoy as Spock appeared behind a door that Pacino's character opened, resulting in the genuine shocked expression needed for the scene. Shatner also played General Mortars in Loaded Weapon 1, a character whose name humorously references both a military weapon and a nod to the General Motors company. This role was part of a film where character names were playfully derived from well-known firearm brands, adding a layer of humor to the action-packed movie. William Shatner's journey as Captain Kirk in Star Trek V The Final Frontier saw him seeking creative control, eyeing Eric Van Lusbader to pen the script. However, the high salary demand led to a fallout with Paramount. Beyond acting, Shatner explored writing, adding the ashes of Eden, The Return, and Avenger to the Star Trek literary universe. His advertising work for Priceline not only brought him back with old co-star Leonard Nimoy, but also connected him with Robert Pine, linking past and present Kirks, as Pine's son Chris took on the iconic captain's role. William Shatner's portrayal of Sergeant T.J. Hooker in the television series T.J. Hooker showcased his acting skills beyond his famous role as James T. Kirk in Star Trek. Both T.J. Hooker and Boston Legal surpassed Star Trek, the original series, in longevity, each running for five seasons. Shatner's career was also marked by a unique agreement with co-star Leonard Nimoy, ensuring equal treatment in their Star Trek contracts. This agreement led to Shatner directing Star Trek V The Final Frontier after negotiations following Star Trek for The Voyage Home. Despite his deep association with the character of Captain James Tiberius Jim Kirk, Shatner admits to never having watched an episode of the series that brought him enduring fame. William Shatner's journey with Star Trek is a tale of unexpected turns and personal challenges. Initially set to direct Star Trek for The Voyage Home, Shatner's commitment to T.J. Hooker meant he passed the helm to Leonard Nimoy. However, he took on the director's role for Star Trek V The Final Frontier. In an interesting twist for international audiences, Star Trek IV was renamed The Voyage Home Star Trek Rimmon IV and featured a unique prologue by Shatner to improve its appeal, following the previous film's lackluster performance abroad. Despite these efforts, the movie's earnings were only marginally better. While directing Star Trek V, Shatner faced and overcame his fear of falling during the filming at Yosemite National Park, showcasing his dedication to the craft and the beloved franchise. William Shatner's portrayal of Captain Kirk in Star Trek, the motion picture came with its challenges, including uncomfortable uniforms that were disliked by the cast. These uniforms were so difficult to remove that they required help, and Shatner's corset, worn since the 1970s, was sometimes visible underneath. The cast insisted on new uniforms for the sequel, leading to the iconic red tunic seen in subsequent films. And third rock from the sun, Shatner's character, the big giant head, references a creature on the wing of a plane, a nod to his role in the Twilight Zone episode Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, and John Lithgow's portrayal of the same character in Twilight Zone the movie. 
This clever exchange connects Shatner's past and present work as Lithgow's character acknowledges experiencing the same event. Shatner's experience filming a sex scene with Angie Dickinson in Big Bad Mama was filled with anxiety, as he describes in his autobiography up till now. Despite his initial fears, the technical nature of the scene made the process less daunting than expected. Dickinson's last-minute decision to have the crew present during the filming added to the scene's complexity, but ultimately, the shoot went smoothly. In Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, William Shatner, portraying Captain Kirk, made a casting switch that led to George Murdoch playing the role of the god creature instead of the Klingon diplomat cord, a part initially intended for him. This change was prompted by Shatner's appreciation for another actor's performance. Shatner's admiration for Herman F. Zimmerman's set design on Star Trek, the next generation also influenced the visual upgrade of the Enterprise's bridge in the film, aiming for a similar aesthetic. Despite the film's mixed reception, Zimmerman's contribution to the Star Trek legacy remains notable. Adding to the family's achievements, Shatner's daughter, Elizabeth, was honored as Miss Golden Globe in 1985, marking a special moment in her career. William Shatner's unique way of speaking, with its sharp theatrical pauses, has become so distinctive that it's often called Shatnerian. His approach to delivering lines made his portrayal of Captain Kirk in Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country memorable. In one notable scene, Shatner as Kirk had to eat Klingon food during a dinner scene. Unlike his co-stars who avoided eating to not repeat the action in multiple takes, Shatner went for it, motivated by a 20 offer from director Nicholas Meyer for each take. Afterward, Shatner had to remind Meyer to pay up. Shatner's involvement with Kingdom of the Spiders is another highlight of his career. He was set to direct and star in a sequel, Kingdom of the Spiders 2, in the late 1980s. The story was about a man with a fear of spiders being tortured to reveal a secret. Although the project was announced with much fanfare, it fell through when the studio declared bankruptcy. A similar fate met another attempt at a sequel in the early 1990s. Even a later attempt with a plot involving government experiments and Native American themes didn't materialize. As of the last update, no sequel has been produced. William Shatner's portrayal of Captain James Tiberius Jim Kirk in Star Trek left a lasting impression on television. His favorite episodes were The Devil in the Dark and The City on the Edge of Forever. Raised in Montreal, Quebec, he speaks both English and French. In Star Trek V The Final Frontier, Shatner's idea of the Enterprise crew encountering a deity was controversial, clashing with creator Gene Roddenberry's vision and causing a rift that lasted for years. Roddenberry's own attempts to explore similar themes had been consistently turned down by Paramount Studios, leading to his criticism of the film series until his death. William Shatner is known for his role as Captain James Tiberius Jim Kirk in Star Trek. Following the passing of Nichelle Nichols, he, along with George Teke and Walter Koenig, remain as the surviving main cast members. His daughter, Melanie Shatner, appeared in Star Trek V The Final Frontier, which William Shatner directed. The connection between Star Trek, the original series, and other shows is strong, with many actors crossing over. This includes George Teke, Leonard Nimoy, Vic Perrin, and Percy Rodriguez, highlighting the shared history and community among the Star Trek series, initially connected through their filming locations at Dezilly Studios and later Paramount Studios. William Shatner's career includes a unique musical endeavor from the late 1960s, where he recorded The Transformed Man, an album that has gained a reputation for its dramatic interpretations, including a memorable take on Mr. Tambourine Man. His approach to performance, once critiqued, is now fully embraced by him. In his role as Captain Kirk in Star Trek V The Final Frontier, Shatner faced challenges beyond the screen. Filming in the Mojave Desert's intense heat led to tensions on set, including a confrontation with the head electrician and a disagreement with cinematographer Andrew Laszlo. Despite these hurdles and a transportation mishap, the crew captured crucial scenes, albeit with the exhausted cast moving at what Shatner dubbed the Sibok Shuffle. Away from the camera, Shatner engages in a different kind of battle at Splat Attack, a paintball center he runs in the United States. He not only oversees the facility, but also steps into the fray, participating in paintball competitions himself. In Star Trek The Motion Picture, William Shatner's portrayal of Captain Kirk required a complex sequence of shots just to depict the travel pod's journey to the Enterprise. It was a labor-intensive process, with 45 shots taken over as many days and teams working non-stop to meet the deadline. The filming technique varied based on the shot distance close-ups of Shatner were used for near views, while puppets substituted in longer shots. 
Shatner's role as Kirk in Star Trek V. The final frontier almost didn't include George Teke due to their personal differences. However, Shatner managed to persuade Teke to join the film, ensuring the original crew was part of the adventure. In the Andersonville trial, Shatner played Colonel Chipman, who led the second Iowa. This role had a subtle connection to his iconic character, Captain James T. Kirk, who was also from Iowa. Shatner's ability to switch from a space explorer to a historical military figure showcases his adaptability as an actor. William Shatner's early days on stage were filled with unexpected turns. During one performance, he had to play piano music that was being played off stage, and then, in a twist, use a weapon from a drawer to act out a murder scene. The piano part did not go as planned, and the only weapon he found was a corkscrew. Shatner improvised and humorously described the scene, saying he screwed him to death. In the world of Star Trek, Shatner's portrayal of Captain Kirk in Star Trek V The Final Frontier is notable. He had a vision for the film that required additional funding from Paramount Studios for its completion and release on DVD. However, the studio declined his request, leaving fans to wonder about what could have been Shatner's full vision for the film. Leonard Nimoy, who played Spock, highlighted that The Final Frontier was the most physically demanding of the Star Trek series. This intensity mirrored Shatner's own preference for action, as he was known for enjoying scenes that involve a lot of movement like running and jumping, which were a significant part of his role as Kirk. William Shatner's presence in entertainment has made notable ripples. In the film Fight Club, his name comes up in a casual conversation about hypothetical fights, showing his cultural impact. Shatner's role as Sergeant T.J. Hooker became so significant that it shifted the entire focus of the television series to his character, a testament to his strong screen presence. His directorial debut with Star Trek V The Final Frontier marked a significant point in his career, showcasing his talents behind the camera as well as in front of it. These moments highlight Shatner's lasting influence in the industry. William Shatner's role as Alexander in the pilot for Alexander the Great never made it to series, but gained attention when released as a TV movie. His portrayal of Captain Kirk in Star Trek Generations marked his final appearance in the franchise, sharing the screen with Sir Patrick Stewart for the first and only time. Shatner's influence extended behind the scenes as well. He played a pivotal role in the development of Star Trek V The Final Frontier, persuading producer Harv Bennett to continue with the project. William Shatner often hesitates to use his cell phone in public places like airports and restaurants. He does this to avoid attention, and comments from people who recognize him as Captain Kirk from Star Trek, often shouting phrases like, Be me up, Scotty, on him. In the original Star Trek series, there's a character named Lieutenant Lemley, played by Roger Holloway. This character's name is a combination of the first letters of the names of Holloway's three daughters, Elizabeth, Leslie, and Melanie. In Star Trek V The Final Frontier, there's a memorable scene where Captain Kirk, played by Shatner, is climbing a mountain. Spock, played by Leonard Nimoy, uses levitating boots to save Kirk after he slips. To create this scene, Nimoy was filmed from the waist up, supported by a crane to simulate floating. Meanwhile, blue screen technology was used to show Shatner falling, and stuntman Ken Bates performed a record-setting high fall off El Capitan for the long shots. William Shatner's connection to the iconic character Captain Kirk is celebrated in music and honored by his home country. The song 99 Red Balloons uniquely keeps the phrase Captain Kirk the same in both English and German versions, highlighting the global recognition of his role. In 2000, Shatner's achievements were recognized with a star on Canada's Walk of Fame, a tribute to his successful career. Further cementing his legacy in space exploration, Shatner recorded a message for NASA's Space Shuttle Discovery crew in 2011. His words, set to the Star Trek theme, inspired the astronauts with a reminder of the shuttle's significant contributions to science and international cooperation in space. William Shatner's experience on the set of Star Trek III The Search for Spock was unique due to the heightened security measures. To prevent thefts like those that happened during the filming of Star Trek Roman II, the production team implemented strict protocols, including the use of picture ID badges and codes. Shatner humorously compared the situation to a real-life version of the television series Mission Impossible. As time passed, Shatner became the oldest living actor from the original Star Trek series after the passing of Grace Lee Whitney. In addition to his acting, Shatner showed his support for animal conservation by riding a killer whale at a benefit event at Marine World Africa USA. His actions reflected his diverse interests and commitment to causes beyond his acting career. In the world of Star Trek, William Shatner's portrayal of Captain Kirk is a standout. 
His performance in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan was set against a backdrop of creative decisions, including a no-smoking sign on the Enterprise Bridge, which was quickly scrapped after its initial appearance. Shatner also directed Star Trek V The Final Frontier, where budget constraints led to practical costume designs by Nyla Rhodes Jamero, reflecting the character's off-duty moments. Despite common misconceptions, Shatner and Leonard Nimoy did not share screen time in the same Star Trek episodes. Their joint appearance occurred in The Man from UNCLE, showcasing their dynamic chemistry outside the Starfleet universe. William Shatner faced a significant challenge during the editing of Star Trek V The Final Frontier. His original version exceeded two hours, but Paramount Studios wanted a shorter film for more screenings. Despite Shatner's belief that the film was tight as it was, editor Harve Bennett was tasked with cutting it down. This led to a tough negotiation between the two on what to keep or remove. William Shatner grew up in Notre Dame de Grace, Montreal, Quebec. In another Star Trek installment, the motion picture, Shatner worked alongside Marcy Lafferty, who was his wife at the time, and played Chief DeFalco. William Shatner's portrayal of Captain James T. Kirk in Star Trek Generations marked his final appearance as the iconic character. The decision to end Kirk's journey was influenced by Shatner's advancing age, ensuring that the character's exit would be as heroic as his life. This passing of the torch saw Chris Pine take on the role in the 29 Star Trek reboot, symbolizing a rebirth for the character. In the television series T.J. Hooker, Shatner played Sergeant Thomas Jefferson Hooker, marking the second time he portrayed a character with initials J.T. His most famous role, Captain Kirk, also had the initials J.T. for James Tiberius. During Star Trek V The Final Frontier, Shatner shared an interesting behind-the-scenes fact. A costly prop, a self-lighting cigarette intended for David Warner's character, was forgotten and never used in the film, despite its functionality and expense. William Shatner's portrayal of Commander Buck Murdoch in Airplane 2 the sequel brought humor to the screen, with a mysterious machine from the set of Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan adding to the comedy. His collaboration with Leonard Nimoy spanned across five different television series, showcasing a dynamic partnership. In Star Trek V, the final frontier Shatner as Captain Kirk faced challenges beyond acting when the final visual effects failed to meet expectations. Despite efforts to secure additional funding for reshoots, the studio declined, leaving the film's climax as is. William Shatner finds joy in the simplicity of horseback riding and the challenge of a tennis match, his love for horses is not just a pastime, it's a passion that he actively pursues. On the set of Star Trek For the Voyage Home, Shatner, portraying Captain Kirk, and Leonard Nimoy as Spock brought their own twist to a scene with an improvised exchange. Their creative decision to alternate yes and no answers added a layer of humor to the film. In another Star Trek installment, The Search for Spock, viewers might notice a deliberate pause in the opening credits. This pause, lasting six seconds before DeForest Kelly's name appears, is a subtle nod to the absence of Nimoy's name, which would traditionally follow Shatner's. It's these small, thoughtful details that contribute to the enduring appeal of the Star Trek series. William Shatner's portrayal of Kirk in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan included a unique prop at Space Station Regula 1, a machine with red tubes that blink back and forth. This prop was later used in Airplane 2 the sequel, where Shatner humorously comments on its purpose. It also appeared in Star Trek The Next Generation. As Captain James Tiberius Jim Kirk in the original Star Trek, Shatner was part of a groundbreaking moment, the first interracial kiss on American television, which sparked much discussion. In Airplane 2 the sequel, Shatner played Commander Buck Murdoch, connecting back to his Star Trek fame, a show influenced by Forbidden Planet, which featured Leslie Nielsen, known for the comedy Airplane. William Shatner is widely recognized for his role as Captain James Tiberius Jim Kirk in Star Trek. Before this, he, along with DeForest Kelly and James Duhon, appeared on The Fugitive, while Leonard Nimoy did not. The Star Trek connection extended to The Six Million Dollar Man, with Shatner, George Teke, Gary Lockwood, and Roger Perry all making appearances. DC Fontana, a writer for Star Trek, penned an episode for the six million dollar man that nodded to the famous Star Trek line, calling space the final frontier. Hart Bennett, who later produced Star Trek movies from the Wrath of Khan to the final frontier, also contributed to the series. In 2010, Shatner celebrated Canada at the Winter Olympics closing ceremony, praising its natural beauty and expressing pride in his homeland. William Shatner's journey in acting took a significant turn in 1956 at the Stratford Festival in Canada. 
When the lead actor for Henry V fell ill, Shatner stepped in, a role previously filled by Christopher Plummer. Away from the stage, he shares his life with his wife, Elizabeth, and their two Dobermans. Shatner's creative vision for Star Trek V The Final Frontier was ambitious, crafting an initial story titled An Act of Love. His narrative involved a vacation to Yosemite, the capture of hostages from various species, and a quest to a planet believed to be home to a deity. In this tale, Captain Kirk, played by Shatner, pretends to align with Tsar, later known as Sibok, to reach this god planet. The climax reveals a deceptive Satan figure, leading to a daring escape by Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Shatner's Kirk is a hero not just in space, but also in loyalty, risking all to save his friends from a dire fate. 